Good afternoon. Colin and I have never met before, but I owe him $50 now. You might be surprised, as I was, to learn that within Harvard University's 70 libraries and among the more than 16 million items they house, we don't own a single copy of the film How High. Why is she talking about How High, you ask? What is How High, your father asks. <laughs> Where am I, your great-grandmother asks. <laughs> For those of you who weren't in middle school in 2001, How High starred rap stars Method Man and Red Man, who, playing bravely off type as stoners, <laughs> smoke magical pot, ace their college entrance exams, and get into Harvard, as one does. <laughs> but uh, I'll get back to that. We all remember that moment four years ago when we each opened our Harvard acceptance letter and, in celebration, danced to Super Freak with the entire family. <laughs> Hi, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Veritas, Veritas, proclaimed everything from the insignia on the letterhead to the face tattoos our proud parents lined up to receive at the coop on pre-fresh weekend. Hi, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Veritas, thought insecure pre me. I don't know if I'm toss enough. I'm only semi-toss. But here I am. Here we all are, about to become Harvard graduates. Harvard graduate. That's the second finest set of five syllables I've ever heard, coming in only slightly behind mozzarella sticks. <laughs> and frankly, it's a lot to live up to. Tomorrow morning, we will all instantly discover that we are all distant Kennedy relatives, sprout a thin layer of tweed, and be named part owners of Facebook. I want a good part. I don't want Farmville. But who am I kidding? I'm from New Jersey, where all tweed is is the way a person with a speech impediment refers to marijuana. I'm not alone in feeling suspiciously less erudite, less sophisticated, and less lustrous haired than what I imagine a Harvard graduate to be. For those of you who don't know me, I prepared a very short list of very good reasons why I could not have conceivably gone to Harvard. One, I have scars from accidentally burning myself with three types of irons, clothes, curling, and waffle. Two, in the fourth grade, I applied an inch-thick layer of green Play-Doh to my glasses and refused to remove it for hours. Three, I once vacuumed my foot. That is a true story. In fact, by virtue of the very prestigious diploma we're about to receive, so much of what we do from this point on will be automatically considered a disappointment. If all Harvard alumni can be ranked on a gradient of awesomeness from JFK to the Unabomber, <laughs> own it, people. I think we'd all like to be at least a four and a half. In our culture, Harvard is a metonym, which along with salient, reify, and quotidian is a word I've used in at least six response papers without knowing what it means. But Harvard stands for something. I spend most of my time watching movies and television shows because I'm very attractive and popular and well-adjusted in every way. <laughs> Lazy screenwriters love Harvard. First of all, it's a great setting, up there with the White House or World War II or the Space White House. But more importantly, a Harvard education is one of the most overused, conveniently definitive character traits in all of Hollywood. The audience needs to understand that this character is smart and probably rich and likely also a D-bag. <laughs> but how to convey that? <laughs> Hold on! In real life, Harvard may have a minuscule 6.2% acceptance rate, but in movies, TV, and literature, it's more like 6.2% of all people in the entire world attended Harvard. Consider that not one, but two characters on the TV show Army Wives are Harvard grads. 
I would pass judgment here, but it occurs to me that I just admitted to an audience of thousands that I am a fan of army wives. <laughs> Allow me to introduce you to some more of your fictional peers. Forget Zucker Who and the Winklewutz. There's Ally McBeal, the rich guy on Gilligan's Island. Patrick Bateman in American Psycho. That one is all you at concentrators. On family matters, Laura Winslow was accepted to Harvard, but curiously, not Urkel. I know, right? <laughs> Rory Gilmore also got into Harvard, but she went to Yale. Suck it, Rory. <laughs> one of the prisoners on HBO's gritty prison drama Oz was a graduate of HLS, so lots to look forward to there. Uh, Elle Woods. Fraser Crane, twofer from 30 Rock. No Harvard characters on Parks and Recreation, though, so that's kind of weird. I don't know. Um, so, how high? I'm not going to stand here and close read the film for you. But do consider Method Man and Red Man a wry nomenclatural link at the inherently patriarchal nature of the American educational system? I'm so sorry, it's become a reflex now. <laughs> but the great thing about How High, about all of these portrayals of Harvard and its students, is that they help us to remember just how special our experience has been and just how special we are. Audiences are gleefully led to believe it can take magic to get in here, as well as some presumably legally prescribed herbal supplements. But we managed it on our own. And legacies, you're great too. <laughs> it's entirely plausible that one of the accomplished young adults sitting among us today may become president one day. And statistically, at least 300 people just thought to themselves, yeah, she's talking about me, so, you know. <laughs> but if I may reify the most salient aspect of this quotidian speech, I'm speaking to all of you when I say, Never forget how impressive you are. As Harvard students, you're already famous. We deserve a collective IMDb page. Don't stop believing. Let's get this party started. And congratulations, Harvard graduates.